The Man with the Yin Yang Eyes. Season 2. Episode 20. We finally made it to Thailand safely. After a few days in the cramped and humid ship hull, now I can breathe the fresh air again. It feels so refreshing. Big D was extremely excited. He had only heard about his friends who had traveled to Thailand before but had never been able to go, so I took out my phone and took a picture as a souvenir. It's just like we are going on a trip. Hey, you guys are crossing the border illegally, not traveling. When you get there, disappear quickly so we can work. When we were still excited, someone spoke up, looking back. It was the ship's owner, and it was he who ordered his subordinates to throw the poor girl into the sea. I used the most casual attitude possible, went up to him, and asked him, Do you want to taste the seawater right now, you bastard? Before the ship owner had time to react, I used a glass bottle containing the female demon's soul to smack him in the face with all my might. It was so sudden that he didn't have time to dodge. The blow was so strong that the ship owner fell into the water. After seeing him fall into the water, I said to him, stay there and think about what you've done. Let's just say I've demanded some justice for the poor girl's soul. Seeing that the big brother was thrown into the water, the two men of the ship owner rushed at me, but it was not so easy. I immediately launched a series of kicks at them. Don't teach these guys a lesson. I don't feel at ease. The ship owner at this time had emerged from the water. Due to being beaten so suddenly, he was shocked. When he fell, he drank a belly of seawater, and when him come up, he cursed. Big D now came to my side and accused me. What are you doing? We are in Thailand now, you do that. Later when we want to return. We know where to find the ship. After reprimanding me for a few sentences, Big D turned to the owner of the ship and apologized to him. As for me, I don't care about that. Once I have enough evidence to prove my innocence, I can just buy a plane ticket and come back. I don't need to take this ship anymore. After that, we went over to say goodbye to the priest and did not forget to ask for each other's social media accounts for future communication. At this time, Big D was extremely impatient and wanted to get out of here as quickly as possible. He said that the ship's owner seemed to be very angry. He would not give us up easily. Sure enough, Big D guessed right. At this moment the ship owner had a gun in his hand. His mouth was constantly shouting. He rushed towards us, behind him were two juniors, they were holding two long, sharp knives. At first, I thought he was just taking out a fake gun to scare us, but when he fired, I froze. Now I confirm that this guy doesn't want to scare us but really wants us dead. I did not expect them to have a gun. You see, I'm not wrong. Why are you teasing him when he's resting peacefully? It's hard for Big D, who has come to Thailand and is still being chased for his life. Who knew they'd have guns, or I'd have taught them a lesson for life. Stop talking nonsense. Hurry up. Someone will come to pick us up. It turned out that before leaving, Big D had made an appointment with an acquaintance to pick us up when we arrived. It wasn't long before we saw someone waving to us. This person was Stephen, Big D's nephew. The young man was somewhat surprised when he saw that his uncle didn't even say hello, just ran away. At this moment he jumped in panic when he saw bullets shooting towards him. Stephen, where's the car? Hurry up, or we'll all die. The car is parked in front. What the hell is going on? Seeing that the situation was not noisy, he immediately ran after us. Hey, boy, it seems that you are preparing to greet me very well. Big D was extremely excited because his nephew Stephen had prepared a cool car to pick him up, but when I saw Stephen run past the car without stopping, I felt something was wrong. It turns out, what Stephen brought to pick us up was a three-wheeler parked next to it. At this point, we can both be picky. We both quickly jumped into the vehicle, immediately Stephen sped away, 
quickly leaving the owner and his juniors behind, knowing that they could not keep up. He immediately raised his gun to the sky and fired a few times to get his anger out. Before leaving, Big D also came back to provoke them. For my part, I just waved my hand as if to say goodbye to them. Stephen then took us to the fake document office to make us two fake passports, and once we had the documents, we could leisurely go to the hotel to rent a room. Sitting in the tricycle, we kept turning back and forth to see the surrounding scenery. The atmosphere here was really noisy. Personally, right now, I just want to go to the hotel to bathe and rest quickly. I've been floating on the sea for a long time without taking a bath. Right now, I feel very uncomfortable and tired. For the rest of the way, we didn't say a word to each other. We both looked at the scenery and thought, not knowing if everything would go smoothly or not. Stephen said that he had prepared a room for us at the Royal Hotel. Hearing the word Royal, Big D sounded very pleased and proud of this nephew. He even promised that after we finished the matter, he would reward Stephen handsomely. By the way, has it come to fruition that I asked you to check information for me? Stephen is a native here. After all, it would be much easier for him to help. Stephen told us that he took care of everything. Our job now is to go back to the hotel to rest first. Everything will be for later. After walking for a while, we arrived. This is a small but quite crowded neighborhood. In the west, there are mainly Chinese people. Big D got out of the car, and as soon as he got off, he asked his nephew why is the Royal Hotel located on this corner. Calm down. This is the Royal Hotel. If you don't believe me, just look up. We reflexively looked up. By now, I understood Stephen's so-called Royal Hotel. It turns out that the name of the Royal Hotel was coined by Stephen, not a high-class hotel for the Giants. Looking at Big D's face right now, I can't help but laugh, but it's better than nothing. Having a place to stay is good. At this moment, a beautiful girl walked past. Big D was amazed at her beautiful appearance. Don't look anymore. It's just a flower girl in the red light district, and it's not difficult to meet girls like that here. This fat guy is indeed somewhat womanizer. Steven manages this hotel, so the two of us are somewhat reassured. As Big D advised in advance, Steven investigated the whereabouts of the exorcist Wong for us. However, he lives in a villa on an isolated island, surrounded by extreme security, so it isn't easy to investigate. Stephen can only take pictures from a distance. Looking at the picture, I guess that there are many hammocks arranged around the house to prevent intruders around this villa. He was very clever in choosing such a dangerous place. Big D also added that the exorcist Wong is also a very difficult guy to deal with. His talent is also better than mine. If you go straight in, you will definitely encounter the guards on the island, so that it will be very difficult. If you want to enter without anyone knowing, the only way to enter is from the sea. This comment of Big D is completely correct, but this way is also extremely dangerous. Because this side is a cliff. With the personality of Exorcist Wong, Big D assumes that he will use many voodoo spells to create an extremely strong protective barrier around him. Hearing that, I also agree with Big D's opinion, and I am a bit worried. When he heard about witchcraft, Stephen immediately asked about Vajra. He said that recently in the social of Mawaitai fighters, they discussed a lot about this magic. Big D immediately explained to his nephew, it is a kind of witchcraft to increase the agility and strength of people. That magic will help martial artists to use their full abilities. It can push their body speed and power to the limit. Typically, the exorcist Wong used that witchcraft to make the silver-haired assassin stronger. That magic made the hair of the assassin's body become white. People who meet him for the first time will think he is albino. When I was with my master, 
I heard about this kind of magic, and if you want to increase your strength in the future, I can help you. When I heard that, I knew Big D was just joking because there's no such thing as witchcraft that won't make the user trade off. Sometimes the cost of that trade off is huge. By this time, it was also dark, Big D and Steven went out to discuss some more things, but I knew that this fat guy just wanted to go out to look for some girls. As for myself, right now, I just want to rest. I suddenly think that coming here is also my predestination, and this journey will help me open up many things. The next morning, after resting and recuperating, around noon, Steven came to find us. Then Steven used a boat to bring us close to the mansion of the exorcist Wong and his associates. After discussing, we will decide to infiltrate the island through this cliff. When I arrived, I was a bit scared. I did not expect this cliff to be so high and dangerous. What's wrong with you? Where's the courage in the hotel? A person who is afraid of heights like me is not afraid. What are you afraid of? Who said I am afraid? How can that tiny cliff make it difficult for me? I don't know what this fat guy has eaten today, but he is so confident, and he even wears tight protective gear, looking very professional. As soon as we had the opportunity, we jumped on the rock near the cliff and started to break in. After a while of convincing, Big D also took off his entangled protective suit. Seeing that we were approaching the cliff, Stephen immediately steered the boat back to shore, avoiding attention. Knowing this, this morning, I should eat a little more. As soon as we climbed a section, Big D began to complain. Although the cliff was quite steep, it was not too difficult to climb, so we did not have too many difficulties. As I was climbing up, I suddenly tripped and immediately looked down. I did not expect that we had climbed so high. The two climbed the cliff carefully. At this height, if we fell, we would surely lose our lives. I finally climbed up to the place. My arms are now tired. Not every day I practice, I soon can't stand. This time I really have to commend Big D, who is both afraid of heights and has to spare his bulky body to climb such a high cliff. He still doesn't believe he can climb it to get to the place until he climbs. After all, he was a disciple of the same teacher with my master, so what Big D learned was not a small amount. He just told me that the mounds of soil were raised without grass growing, most likely where the exorcist Wong set up traps to prevent an intruder. Big D had just finished speaking when from beneath the pile of dirt, he had just seen a handful of claws emerged. Not long after that mound emerged a crocodile, rather a crocodile zombie. It was extremely large and aggressive. This is the army that protects the mansion of Exorcist Wong. He used evil magic to create these zombie monsters. What a scary person. This crocodile is extremely aggressive, and it's a zombie, so it's very difficult to destroy. It's best to ignore it, run fast, maybe we can escape it. Hearing me say that, Big D immediately agreed. I will run over to the crocodile to lure it. You take the opportunity to run first, and I will follow you. As soon as I finished my sentence, the crocodile screamed, opened its mouth wide, and rushed towards us. Not letting the crocodile come near, I immediately jumped up and rushed towards it seeing that the crocodile began to focus on me. As fast as I could, I jumped on the crocodile's head. Taking advantage of its resistance, I jumped back behind the giant crocodile. I thought that after attracting the crocodile's attention, it would come back to chase me as soon as I landed. However, surprisingly, it must have been seen that Big D was just standing still. So he was easier to eat than me so it rushed towards Big D. Big D now only knows how to run for his life, running while cursing loudly. Now I look around to see if there is anything that can attack the crocodile from a distance, but I really don't want to get close to it at all. Looking for a while, I found some stones. 
In the meantime, this is the most reasonable. Immediately, I picked up the stones and continuously threw them at the crocodile to attract its attention. This certainly worked. The crocodile immediately aimed at me because there was premeditated. As soon as it charged, I quickly climbed up the tree. Looking to the side, Big D has already climbed a tall tree as fast as he can. I also have to admire him. I didn't expect him to climb the tree so quickly. I did not forget to remind Big D to be careful. This crocodile is a zombie, but it is extremely smart. It can't climb the tree to chase us, so it immediately uses its strong teeth to bite into the tree trunk. With just one bite, the huge tree immediately crumbled in front of the crocodile's strong teeth, confirming that this crocodile is not ordinary at all. Since I had prepared in advance, I immediately jumped to another tree. When I was able to cling to the tree, I turned my head to look back and saw that the crocodile was now rushing over the tree where Big D was hiding. I immediately shouted for Big D to jump to another tree. But before I finished my words, I saw Big D running through another tree at lightning speed. Even though I was in a dangerous situation, I couldn't help but laugh because Big D's posture is exactly the gorilla passing between trees scenes. Normally they are slow and sluggish but when they are in danger, they are quick and agile. The position I was standing in could clearly see the mansion of the exorcist Wong, and I immediately called Big D to inform him of the location. Careful, behind. As soon as I heard Big D scream, I immediately turned my head, and it was a zombie monkey. It was fiercely rushing towards me. 